Now, follicle-stimulating hormone is responsible for estrogen production, and luteinizing hormone is responsible for progesterone production. So here's what happens during the course of a normal 28-day cycle in a woman. So at the beginning of the cycle, day zero, uh, the pituitary secretes follicle-stimulating hormone. And that has the effect of increasing estrogen levels for about half of the cycle, until what's called mid-cycle. The first half is called uh, the follicular phase. Now, when estrogen peaks around mid-cycle, that prompts the pituitary gland to have a quick burst of luteinizing hormone, which then tells the body to secrete progesterone, and estrogen will drop off. In fact, they both eventually drop off if pregnancy doesn't happen and the cycle continues. So the first half, as you can see with the blue line, is an estrogen-dominant period, and the second half is a progesterone-dominant period. So. Here's some of the shortcomings of modern testing to quickly go over is that one blood draw does not assess an entire month of hormonal shifts. This is a woman's hormonal profile, a normal profile. If all you do is one blood draw, you don't look at the entire month. And I'll tell you what type of testing that, that I particularly prefer in our practice. But here's a problem and a point that I want to make. If this woman went in, to get her uh, blood drawn from a doctor or her, her hormones assessed, if she went in on day 19 only, on th that particular day her hormone was at normal levels. So she could be told that she's fine, that she has no problem with her hormones, that all the symptoms that she's having in her head and then is sent home. The second thing that you need to do if you want to balance your hormones is manage your stress and specifically cortisol. Elevated cortisol as it relates to hormones will suppress pituitary function. It's the, again, the pituitary is the master gland that uh, tells all the rest of the hormone glands of what to do. And here's an example. Uh, this slide was used for the, the male hormone, but it, it will serve for, for here. So the pituitary, if it's, if it's dysfunctional by elevated cortisol levels, you'll have a decrease in production of FSH and LH, which will lead to a decreased production of estrogen and progesterone. And secondarily to that, in the case of chronically elevated stress, sex hormones are not important for women. And in fact, this pathway here is. So cholesterol is converted into cortisol to the exclusion of all the other sex hormones and women, specifically estrogens.